when you are full of bounty, you prepare for the hard times. It's not a time to rest and feel like you're pimping it or whatever they do on MTV or something. I don't know. <laughs> First thing I'm doing is um, walking around looking for little holes and then <coughs> and little bumps and if there's just, okay, I can land my body up here, I want to get down. I'm going to roll back and forth in it. No leaf litter, no nothing, just as is on the ground. I want to feel every little bump, right? I'm thinking about drainage too, so I don't want to wake up in a puddle. I want to be on a slightly domed area or at least a flat that has a slope or is on a slope but I don't want the slope to be too drastic either because I don't want to wake up with my head this big or you know you're sliding down a hill the entire night so all of these things come into consideration okay my location's good I'm gonna start now breaking my bed always build your bed first start from the foundation up okay a really solid foundation is a pile of leaves that you've gathered about hip joint height. And that one compressed, figure two thirds reduction. So you're only gonna end up with a third of the amount of leaves that you gather once you compress it and it's overnight compression. That's how much leaf litter compresses, okay? And the reason we're doing this is because your body loses heat in a number of mechanical ways. And the primary way in New England with our dense clay soils and our rocks underneath the soils is conduction. Conduction is the most common method for chronic hypothermia. So for our purposes with this shelter, we're building a bed to prevent conduction. We've got to handle uh, radiation. Radiation is the primary mechanic for the atmosphere taking your body heat. The wind just accelerates it. Kind of like you're in the water and it's 55 degrees and you're going to start shivering. But if you add a current where it's whisking away that core temperature, it goes that much faster. So lay down, get here by yourself, make a shark's fin. That's where, at the very least, the opening of your debris hut comes. You don't want it any closer because rain never, you know, ne never goes sideways. Same thing. I'm going to make a hand length, and I'm going to mark it. Now, regarding conduction, yeah, that should, because I'm going to be inside here. Okay. Although maybe not if this is ants. Yep, it's ants. So maybe not this place. Okay. Um, yeah. Here. Here. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an outline, one hand length, from base of palm to tip of index finger, all the way around my body. It's that one hand length, and I mark the, my hips are the widest, my shoulders are widest. Right? I can collapse my shoulder. I can't collapse my hips. Oops, that's too short. My knees are a good indicator mark because I want to be able, in my mind, to uh, draw an outline here. Mm. Size of my ankles and bottoms of my feet. So sometimes I'll do this. Mark it. Plant my markers. And suits. So many distractions with these plants. Mm -hmm. Right there. What I have now, you can barely see it, but is an outline of my body. One hand length around my perimeter. That's where the base of my ribs are gonna go. <clears throat> that sets the whole effect of that perfect sleeping Side, size change. And put your hand up next to your hip. So give you an idea of how far this should come down. Right? Okay. Or you can build up your bed. I say we build up the bed. Okay, Mike is taking off to go get some water. He's going to pour it on top of the shelter here at some point. We've been continuing to collect leaves. There's Charlie. There's a big bag of leaves here. So what we've done on one side of this ridge pole, we've gone ahead and started putting leaves on. So we're going to put the rest of those on there. And we want to go to, what did he say, about two and a half, three feet? Uh, uh, four arms yeah, length. Four arms. four arms length. So 18 inches. So we still get some... Uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, yeah. how about uh, rolling on your side and seeing how far you are from there? Yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. Pretty tight. Yeah. Okay, so what we're doing is we've got some leaves on here, and we're putting a secondary lattice work of uh, branches on top of that. So that'll help hold everything in place for our next batch of leaves that's going to go on top. Four, Four 
three, two, two one. one. Oh, that's right on him. It's dribbling on my chest. <laughs> okay, that's only five seconds. Keep going. All right, 30 seconds. This is in my head, but 30 seconds. Come on out. Let's see how what the damage is. Five gallons directly on, right? Yep. So if this were the apprentices, you have to tear it down and start all over again. But we only have a weekend. So the reason I was asking those questions, how was it dripping? Was it increasing, decreasing? Was it localized or spreading? All tells me what went wrong with the stratification of the debris in your shelter. Yeah. Okay. Um, so less than you would spill a That's cup of awesome. coffee on a speed bump. Yeah. Not too shabby. Like half a point right? It was right there where That's right. the entire contents went. Who yeah. did it, Bob? <laughs> I, I had a feeling. Now the reason I had a feeling was because when we start with the debris hut, uh, you want to put your debris as a strong foundation and moosh it in. Then the next one, moosh it in. Then the next one, moosh it in. Then the next one. And what you have are shingles. Yeah. Right? But because I can't explain it all in a weekend, I do my best to give you the, the structure and then we plug the holes where we can. And in this case, we didn't plug a hole. But, you know, that's about spilling your coffee on a speed yeah. bump. Boom. And that's five gallons of water. Yeah. So for a first time and as a group, because it's like a committee, mm -hmm. um, not bad. So I'm going to crawl into the shelter we just built and see how it works. Yeah. And then from there, the Colby's going to take over with water, water purification, gathering, storage. So basically, we built a sleeping bag with a bivy. And it just <laughs> took a long time to do it. Yeah. And a lot of leaves. But uh, as you saw, Charlie was able to get five gallons of water poured on him. And he only had just a little bit on him. So I think this would work really well in any survival situation. So. Yeah, great shelter. Good work, guys. <laughs> you too, man. Good. Well, you spent the night in a debris hut. It rained. I'm sure it was pretty buggy. It was when uh, we ended yesterday. So, how'd it go for you? Um, the marker crawled in. Uh, I scrooched all the way down uh, and uh, pulled my bag in after me because I thought it might rain. And it was really comfortable. First thing I noticed, I was hot. Uh, the previous night, I was actually cold, and uh, I had to strip. I, so I wound up pushing my bag to the side to let more air in, and uh, was just in a t-shirt in, in the debris hut. Uh, woke up at uh, like 1:30 to take a leak. I, I think I actually heard some thunder. Got out just as it started to rain. You know, took a leak. Came back in, uh, everything, you could hear the rain falling on it and it started to get, you know, rain pretty hard. Not a drop of a leak anywhere. Uh, when I woke up in the morning, uh, I was completely dry. Um, a small leak about a foot in from the door, uh, you know, on the other side of my bag. Uh, uh, as you go, it was, it was a great night's sleep and uh, totally enjoyed it. That level of awareness usually comes after at least five debris nuts, right? Yes, you can modify your bed. Remember, our goal isn't to survive the night, it's to live out there in comfort with nothing. He's getting close. He's, he's developing his Sealy Posturepedic adjustable air mattress and understanding how compression affects it. That takes a long time to get to.